In Creo Simulate, you can apply torsion loads using a technique called total load at point. Let's take a look at how to do this. Here I have a part that I want to analyze. I want a torsion load on this side and it's going to be constrained over on the other side. To get into Creo Simulate, I will go to the Applications menu and here we have Simulate. And so the first thing I'm going to do is apply a material to this part. Let's go to material assignments. And if I take a look inside of here, starting in Creo Parametric 7.0, you have this default material that is applied to your default body. Let's click on the more button to select a different material. Here's another warning regarding that the default material. Let me close the warning. I'll go to Legacy Materials and just grab the steel material over here. Right click and then Add to Model. There we see it in the list. Let's choose Select. And now we have steel inside of here. I will click the OK button. And there is an icon on the screen for the material assignment. If I scroll down in the model tree, here we can see in the bottom portion, we also have the material assignment. All right, that's good for that. The next thing I will do is to find some constraints. Let's go to the displacement tool and I'm going to constrain this surface. Let me grab some of the other surfaces for where the bolts are going to go. Just grab a few over here. And here we have the name of the constraint. I'm not going to bother changing that or the name of the constraint set. I'm defining it in the world coordinate system. You can see a little graphic of it down here. Fixing all the translations. Since this is going to be meshed with solid elements, we don't have to bother with constraining the rotations. That would be meaningless. Let's click the OK button. So that's good for that. And now, let's take a look at the mesh. We can go to Refine Model. And here we have the Automatic Geometric Element Mesher, also known as AutoGem. I'll click on that. Let's hit the Create button. Okay, and here we have the summary, and it looks like it's going to have about almost 5,000 tetrahedra elements. You can see the preview of it on there. That looks great. Took 0.2 minutes to generate. Let's close out of here, and then we can close out of this. Do we want to save the mesh? Eh, I'm not going to bother doing that. I'll let it recreate the mesh when I run the analysis. Okay, now for the torsion load. Actually, before I do that, I am going to create a coordinate system specifically for doing that. You don't have to do that, but I might as well show how to do that. I'm still on the Refine Model tab. Let's create some additional geometry. I'm going to create a point for locating the coordinate system. I'll click on point. I'll grab this edge over here and instead of being on the edge let's choose oops looks like i got the vertex let me remove that and make sure i'm getting the actual edge itself now i can change this from on to center that's what i want that's where i'm going to locate my coordinate system and actually let me show you a mistake i want to show you what can happen over here okay instead of using that edge let's remove this and i'm going to put the coordinate system in plane with the same surface that i'm going to apply to the load to i just want to show you an error that you can get so here i have the point over here let's click the ok button and now with the point still selected, let's create our coordinate system. One thing I like about creating coordinate systems in Creo Simulate versus Creo Parametric is that you have this drop down list where you can choose what kind of coordinate system it is going to be. Let's change this to cylindrical and let's use, let's go to the orientation tab and activate the collector for defining the orientation. Let's use this surface to define the Z direction. That's going to help me with defining the torsion and select another surface like this surface. Let's have this one be theta equals 90 degrees. That is good. Now I can click the OK button. And so now I've created a coordinate system that I can use for defining the torsion load. Again, I could have done it in the world coordinate system, but I feel like it's more appropriate to have a cylindrical coordinate system. Okay, now we're ready to define the load. Let's go to the Home tab, and here we have the Force Moment icon over here. And 
let's select the surface that the torsion load is going to be applied to and for doing a torsion load you're going to want to go to the advanced button over here and change the distribution from total load to total load at point now we can select a point i could use that pnt zero but one thing i want to point out is that you can create a point on the fly on the surface that's going to be applied to here you can see that the name of the point is f PNT zero that F is short for field point field points are used a lot in the behavioral modeling extension and the point can be anywhere on that surface because the load is going to be located at the center of the surface uh, it's going to be resolved over there so it doesn't matter where you locate the point you don't have to get too finicky about that and instead of using the world coordinate system, I'm going to select a coordinate system and let's grab this cylindrical coordinate system that I just created. You'll notice that the component changed from X, Y, and Z for the world coordinate system to R, theta, and Z. And so I want to define my torsion about the Z axis. Here we have the moment right now in my default model unit. It's giving me inch squared pound mass per second squared. What? Let's change it to something that makes more sense. Let's change to meter newtons or newton meters as I like to call them. And let's do 1000. Now this obeys the right hand rule. I can do the preview over here and we can see that the direction of torsion that we're getting. If I wanted going in the opposite direction, let's change that 1000 to negative 1000. And now we'll preview once again. You'll notice that the direction has changed. So that's good. Again, the important point th here is that you're using the total load at point distribution method. You can create a point on the fly. And optionally, you can use a different coordinate system than the world coordinate system. Okay, let's click the OK button out of here. I have everything that I need in order to run the analysis. Let's go to the analyses and studies dialog box. From the file drop down menu, I'm going to create a new static analysis. And let me call this my crankshaft torsion. That's the name of the analysis that I will use. We're not going to do anything nonlinear. I only have one constraint set, so I don't need to combine them. Here we have my load set. For the first time that I run an analysis, I like to use single pass adaptive just to make sure that it works correctly. Multi pass adaptive, I really don't find any value in that. Or, excuse me, quick check, I don't find any value in quick check because it just runs everything at a polynomial order of three. If I'm happy with the analysis, then I will go from single pass adaptive to multi pass adaptive. And from the output tab over here, you can see that it's calculating stresses, rotations, and reactions. If you want to, you can check the local stress errors. Here we have the plotting grid. I really recommend not increasing this. Sometimes I actually even decrease it to make it run faster. The plotting grid determines how many points on each element face that you're going to get results calculated for. If you have too high a plotting grid, it can actually take too long to run or not even complete running at all and i'm not going to have any excluded elements this is good let's click the ok button out of here oops name is invalid i used invalid character let me change that dash to an underscore and now let's click the ok button so here we have the analysis before i run it let's change the settings on the analysis and i believe it's this icon over here configure the run settings and here right now it's going to my default working directory that's good i can change the location if i want but the big thing over here is the memory allocation right now it is using eight gig on here based on my computer i can go higher hoping that it'll work faster now we can click the OK button out of there. Let's now run this. I hit the green flag to start the run. Do I want interactive diagnostics? I always say yes. And here we are getting a warning. It says, hey, the curve or surface load is defined with respect to a non-Cartesian coordinate system whose origin lies on a reference of the load. 
please redefine the load. So again, it's running right now. It's still probably going to end up kicking out results in here, but this is indicating that there is a problem. So if you're going to create a coordinate system for defining the load and change it to be a cylindrical coordinate system, hey, don't have it located on the surface where the load is going to be applied. So I have trouble picking PNT0 out of here. Uh, let's do it the easy way. Let me go to my model tree and here we have the simulation features. I'm going to select PNT0 and edit definition and I'm going to change it from that edge over here. Let me remove that and pick this edge over here and I'm going to change it from on to center. That's good. Let's click the OK button and now the coordinate system is located over here. Technically I'm going to change the orientation of the coordinate system because again I don't want it using anything from this surface over here let's go to the orientation tab here again it's using that surface over here let me change it to this surface over here and I'm gonna flip the Z direction just so that it maintains the same orientation as before let's click the OK button and let's select the load and edit definition I'm just gonna preview it Make sure it's still going in the correct direction. That's good. Now I will click the OK button. Let's go back to the analyses and studies. Let's rerun this analysis. I'm going to overwrite the existing files. Yes, I want interactive diagnostics. And now it's running. Let's go to the uh, study status. And here we can see it going in here, generating the elements. And let's let this run for couple minutes all right it is done let's take a look at the results in here so the total clock time was about 25 seconds which is close to the CPU time that's good and a couple other things I want to check in here let's scroll up to the run information uh, so I just want to check over here. All right, so with single pass adaptive, it runs everything at a polynomial order of three. And then based on the difference in stresses using two different methods, the single element stress method and the super converged stress method, it's going to increase the polynomial order of some of the edges to maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to a maximum value of nine. You want to check that it doesn't hit a value of nine because that's an indication that you might not have convergence in your model. Here it only went up to a value of seven, so I'm happy with that. Another thing to note with the information over here, you can take a look at how much memory was actually used and use that to update your run settings to make sure that you're just using the correct amount of memory for the analysis. All right, that's good. Let's click the close button out of here and we can take a look at the results. Now here we have a results icon in the home tab. I prefer to access the results right from the analysis and design studies dialog box just because it makes it easier to go right to the results for that particular analysis. Here you see it's automatically selected in here. I don't have to use the open button in order to find wherever the results folder is on my computer. All right, so let's take a look at some fringe results. Let's change the output for the stress. Let's report this in megapascals. And von Mises is always a good way of taking all the different stresses and getting a, an, a sense of the stress in your model because it adds the normal stresses and the shear stresses together. I'm gonna look at everything. Let's go to display options. I like continuous tone. Let's have this deformed. I'm going to use the 10% scaling until I have a sense of the amount of deformation. And let's also animate this. Now I will click the OK and show. And so here's the side that was constrained. And let's take a look at this side over here. We can see the peak value of the stresses. Looks like it was 308 megapascals. If you go to the view tab in the results over here, you can crank up the speed if you want it animating a little bit faster on the screen. Whoa, too fast. Slow, slow down. 
All right, so there we go. And yeah, those are the results that I would have expected with this torsion load over here. So that is how you can use the total load at point for defining your torsion loads in a part. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.